Hello and welcome to a brand new edition of Inside Out on the Road. Well, it's a show we focus on individual stocks with in-depth analysis, deep dive into financials, and also tell you about the key risk and triggers going forward. Well, let's not waste any time and get straight. Inside Out is on the colorful roads of Pondi Bazaar in Chennai and clearly I'm not following the team. But today we are going to talk about a company which is going to complete a year soon on the bourses. It listed back in November 2021 with massive listing gains of 91%. Go Fashions is the company that I'm talking about which has seen the first mover advantage in the women's bottom wear segment. And they operated under the brand Go Colors and they saw a shift from the unorganized to organized market here. In terms of what they do via distribution, as any retailer would do, they have exclusive brand outlets and also large format stores with around 533 EBOs and around 1700 large format stores. 70% of their revenues come in from EBOs, 23% from large format stores and 2.5% from online stores. In FY22, they did revenues of 400 crore rupees which doubled on a YOI basis because of a low base, margins of 30% and profits of 58 crore rupees. But going forward, what is, what is the plan of the company, what is the premiumization opportunity and will they be able to continue this growth that they are talking about? Let's find out from the management. So it's time to get in the management of Go Fashions. We are now joined by Mr. Gautam Saraugi who is the CEO of the company joining us on Inside Out today. And Gautam, thank you so much for joining us thank here. It is a pleasure to have you with us on Inside Out. And you know, as I was saying earlier, you've created a niche when it comes to women bottom wear market. Uh, it was an unorganized sector, you gave it the organized flavor. Now what next? How are you ensuring scalability and no saturation in the business that you're in? Yeah, so Sunal, see, we, uh, we have a very small market share uh, in a very large addressable market. We have a 8% market share in a 4,000 crore addressable market which will become 11,000 crores by 2025. So the opportunity for growth is very large for us. See, today we are having about 533 stores. So we are going to keep adding 120 to 130 stores. We are going to have very strong same store sales growth. So the opportunity for growth in this segment is very, very large. Okay. So when you talk about that 8% market share, 4,000 crore rupees of addressable market, is it just the women's bottom wear market that you're talking about or is it the bottom wear market that you're no, talking about? No, the overall bottom wear market is about 13,000 crores in which we operate in the branded space. Okay. So the branded space is 4,000 crores. So, but there's a very big shift uh, from unbranded to branded. So the proportion of branded in the years to come will keep increasing. Okay. So by 2025, uh, it will become 11,000 crores out of a 24,000 crore bottom wear market. Okay, understood. So if that's the case, what is the opportunity for premiumization in that case? The growth that will come in, that you're talking about, how much of it will be driven by premium products? How much will it be by network expansion? See, uh, our idea is to grow at a CAGR of more than 20%. So out of the 20%, we see at least 10% going to be driven by same store sales growth. And the balance is going to be coming from new store, store network expansion. Of course, in the earlier years, we are going to grow at a much higher CAGR. But in a long-term CAGR, we see our growth of more than 20%. From a premiumization perspective, our products are very high quality and rightly priced. Our average selling price is currently about 712 rupees a unit, which will settle down between 900 and 1000 because it, more than 80% of our products are less, are priced less than 1000 So we don't want to overcharge the customer or have a very high premium range. So that's why we are consciously keeping the pricing below 1000 for more than 80% of our products. Now we are inside the fancy store that Go Fashions has, uh, a very flagship store in the heart of Chennai. And so let's talk about stores only now, right? You said 533 exclusive uh, brand outlets you have, around 1700 large stores. Uh, you said 100 to 120 store additions every year. Which one will it be? Will it be EBOs? Will it be LFSs? And if you can just explain, what is the cost of setting up an EBO? Is this more margin accretive for you? So the 120 to 130 stores we are planning to add are more on the EBO front. Those are exclusive brand outlets which are run by the company. Uh, they are usually for setting up a store is about 35 to 37 lakhs including inventory. Hmm. And we, uh, because of our great economics, what we have at a store level, we are able to have a payback period of about 15 to 18 months. We are able to re recover the investment what we put up for a store. Okay. So it's easier to put EBOs rather than LFS? No, LFS is also a very good channel for us and we are going to selectively be growing our presence every year. But our focus is also going to be on EBO. 
which is going to be our 120 to 130 stores. Okay, so right now, majority of your revenues, they come in from, uh, uh, you know, eight top cities. What is the plan going forward here? Do you think if you cater to tier two, tier three cities or tier four cities more, Yes, revenue will grow, but growth will be slower because maybe volumes will be impacted then. A person will not come very often to the store in a tier 3, tier 4 cities to buy your product. See, uh, our experience between tier 3 and tier 1 have been very similar. Though a tier 1, usually the average revenue of a store is much higher than a tier 3, but the disparity in our case is not too large because ours is a more core essential wear brand. Even our average selling price is less than 1000. Mm. So our experience in tier 3 versus tier 1 has been very consistent. Mm. So. Uh, even as we grow our network and we start to open in tier 3 and tier 4, we really don't see the economics of our business changing uh, too much. It does not change so much. It does much. not too much, change too much, but even when we are probably tomorrow 1000 plus stores mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. the mix of the top uh, 8 cities would be 60% even it then. Is. Okay. So the ra that ratio does not change. That ratio won't change. And in terms of pricing, you said priced around 1000 rupees, 700 to 1000 rupees, right? So it will go up to 1000. Any chance of it going beyond that? Because if you're talking about strong same store sales growth, will it largely be driven by volumes? What is What was it pre-COVID and how is it right now? See, from a same store sales growth perspective, we had uh, double digit same store sales growth prior to COVID. And uh, currently, uh, we also have double digit same store sales growth. So we are backing our same store sales growth to be on the basis of volume hmm. and not basically price increase or ASP. See, ASP will play a key role, but ASP will have its limitations because we are consciously trying to price our products less than 1000. Mm. So the steady state same store sales growth will be driven by volume level. Okay, so more focus on volumes and less on realization store to no, say. ASPs will improve, but it will have its own limitations. Okay, so this is all on the demand side, the sales side. Let's talk about the supply side as well. You have outsourced your manufacturing uh, to some vendors. Um, can you tell us whether that is something that you will continue to do and also are these like uh, specified vendors, you have one vendor, number of vendors and uh, uh, what is the contract like with them? Just wanting to understand in terms of business, it, is it a long standing relationship there? See, um, our, uh, our sourcing uh, methodology is very simple. We buy our fabric from fabric mills and we give that fabric, uh, ready to cut fabric to job workers to convert that into a garment. And we have a very large base of outsourced vendors. Mm. So we feel uh, outsourcing is the right way to go forward for a brand like us because we are growing at more than 20-30% every year. And uh, when you're in a very high growth business in retail, uh, a simplified outsourcing model is a model that suits us. Right. So and, these, and these vendors are not, uh, they're not exclusive to us. Mm. We work on a purchase order basis with them. So these are vendors we have worked for a very long time, but they're not, they're not exclusive vendors to the company. Okay, but they ensure continuity for you. It's not as like one day yeah, some, some risk would be there because no, of that. No, there's no risk from that perspective. Okay, so yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, going forward in that case, since we are talking about how big the market opportunity is, and that brings the question, if you, then of course, uh, other companies will also try to catch on sure. to it, right? So competition continues to be a big risk. In that case, you must have strategized, okay, this is what the company will do to ensure that you maintain that leadership. Of course, you will be able to latch onto that market as well. But apart from that, what would your USP be in that case? What is Go Fashions doing? See, I think one of our uh, key USPs is that our product development skills. I think, look, if you take our bottom wear range, there are many products which have been innovated and invented by us, which has done really to just keep their minds on product innovation. Mm -hmm. So product innovation and back-end supply chain, which is a, because see, we are in a very large SKU business. Mm -hmm. So supply chain is something, is one of our key expertise. So product development and supply chain are going to be the two strong pillars which is going to distinguish us from our maybe potential competition. Okay. So uh, advertising is one way, right, to ensure that there is market visibility, market leadership stays. Ad spends have been around 2 to 2.5% for you for the longest time. This, this quarter, we saw it jumping to 4, 4.5%. Is this trend going to continue? Are you going to add on more to your ad expenses? No. So I think from our advertising uh, expenditure, 4.5% uh, is the highest. I don't think we are going to cross the 4.5% benchmark. Some years might be at 2, some years might be at 4. On an average, we would be between 3 and 4. This year we have spent around four to four and a half because we have done some television advertising. Mm. But four and a half is going to be the upper limit. Okay. And the reason our a AMP spends are so low is because of our EBOs. You see, our, our EBOs are located in the best high streets and malls, and they 
act as a very high advertising medium for us. Okay. So for us, over and above our EBOs, for us, there's no real need for us to materially spend on advertisements. Okay. So is that one of the reasons why your average revenue per square feet of every EBO is maybe the highest in the industry? So can you scale it up from there? Where are you benefiting? One is that your ad spends are low. The other costs, are they on the lower side? And just if you can scale that 17,000 figure higher from here. See, for us, more than sales per square feet, so now it's going to be very important. Are the averages what a store gives through mm -hmm. throughput is going to be important. Right. See, for us, potentially, we might take 100 square feet higher store size. Right. So, rent to revenue ratio might not be the right, so not rent to revenue, uh, sales per square feet ratio might not be the right ratio for us to look at. Our absolute averages of a store, are they improving? So, we would ideally want, so today our ab absolute average for a store is between 80 to 90 lakhs a year. So does that improve year on year is so going to be the real how question. How do you expect that to improve? So that is going to be driven by same store sales growth. Same store. So that same, on a conservative basis, we see that we are able to get a double digit same store sales more than 10%. So those averages automatically every year will keep improving. Okay, okay, interesting. So uh, generally in that case, since you spoke about, uh, you know, EBOs, uh, they, the payback period comes back uh, and the investment is around 35 lakhs with the inventory. 35 to 38 lakhs. 35 to 38 lakhs with inventory. Uh, can you give us a sense of how the inventory cycle works here? What is the working capital in a business like yours and generally in the industry as well? And is there scope for improvement there? See, at a, at a company level, we are having about 90 days of inventory. Mm -hmm. uh, optimum inventory, we would like to keep 90 days, but currently we are having about 100 days of inventory. Uh, working capital days are around 130 to 140 days. Mm -hmm. As far as EBO is concerned, uh, specifically on an average for an EBO, we maintain about 45 to 50 days of inventory. Okay. So on a steady state level, on a company basis, we are looking to keep our inventory days at 90 not at 100 we want to optimize it by 10 days mm -hmm. and a steady state of working capital days at about 120 115 to 120 days okay. on a steady state basis ideally okay. we would want to be there okay and all that store expansion plans that you're talking about will it be largely in south have you decided which geography you're going to focus more or is it going to be the way it is no see we for, for us rather than zones it's going to be depending on cluster based expansion mm -hmm. models so for us our fundamental of expansion has been that we go to the largest city in a particular zone, then we go to the second largest, then the third largest. So it's going to be a pan India expansion model, but we are going to be focusing on top eight cities, then tier one, then tier two, then tier three. It's going to be a more cluster based expansion model. Okay. So south, east, west, north are going to have equal preference. So equal preference for all the stores. Yeah. Uh, so in that case, expansion, how will it be funded? What do you think? You will you are adequately funded when it comes to store expansion? See, uh, currently uh, we just had uh, our IPO, so we have uh, fresh. We had a fresh issue element on it, so we have about 135, 130 to 135 crores of cash in the balance sheet, mm -hmm. and also the business eventually is going to throw throw out a lot of free cash. Correct. So, considering that expansion will be well supported by the internal accruals. So, no fundraising, no, no debt no, uh, required no, for the no, company. No. Uh, let's go across to the next segment that is the online sales. Uh, we are in a world which has changed after COVID, right? Uh, online sales still 2.5% for you. Are you planning to scale it up? And if yes, say two, three years down the line, will that be a majority chunk as well? Not majority, but so to say in double digits. See, uh, ideally our target is to go to 9 to 10% in the near future. Mm -hmm. Like rightly you said, it's not going to be a, look, a big, okay. very big channel for us, mm -hmm. but we are targeting to at least take it to about 9 to 10% in the coming years. So we are looking at a combination of EBO and online together to be about 85 to 90% of the business eventually. Okay, 85 to 90% is Which EBOs is, and online. Eventually we would ideally want it to be. So what that. about so, large format stores in that case? No, large format stores would keep growing as a as an absolute number. Mm. It's just that as a channel mix, as a percentage to contribution, it'll it'll uh, it'll reduce. Okay. But the absolute number of large format stores in terms of revenue will keep growing. It's just that EBO and online yes. together will have a higher growth. It okay, understood. Um, so in that case, uh, uh, tell us what is the outlook on margin? Since ad spends, they've increased from 25 to 4%, 4.5%. You say, okay, you will not go beyond that. But will it take a hit on your margins? Because 30% in quarter one or FI22 for that matter. See, uh, on, a, on a gross margin perspective, we see our GM improving. Mm -hmm. Because as the EBO contribution increases, mm -hmm. our gross margin in the company level also will keep increasing. Mm -hmm. Because our gross margin at an EBO level is 68%. Mm -hmm and company level is 60%. So the gap between the 60 and 68 will keep reducing. Mm -hmm. So overall, as the gross margins of the com company improve, even the EBITDA margins will improve. But keeping the same channel mix into account, we see a 
31 to 32 percent EBITDA post India is on a consistent basis. Okay, so despite the increase, we don't in see we don't see affecting the margins. You don't we see okay. The ad expenses won't affect your margins. And what be. about and what about revenues? Because you've been in that range of 300 to 400 crore rupees. Of course, pandemic hit here. I'm not counting that at all. Uh, thousand crores. By when do you expect to reach that range? Difficult to give a uh, give diffi difficult to give a time period, but we would ideally want to grow at like I said more than twenty percent at a CAGR, hmm. and uh, you know the coming years, the, the initial years, we will have a higher growth percentage. See, currently we are at a average revenue of about uh, fifty to fifty five crores a month. Hmm. So we're looking to scale and uh, reach the thousand number as much as possible, as soon as possible. That's interesting and good wishes to you for that. Seven hundred and thirty SKUs, seven hundred. Uh, that's the no, correct no, number. We, no, no, we have uh, more than three thousand SKUs. More than three thousand SKUs. SKUs because each product will have different colors, different sizes. So, so how do you SKUs. how do you pick? What do you have to buy for your wife then? There's so <laughs> many options out there. But uh, jokes aside, are you planning on adding more more SKUs to that? And yes, so say two years down the line, can Go Fashion say, okay, we have around. 4,000, 5,000 SKUs. Is that continuously happening for you? See, uh, it's see our new product additions will keep happening. Mm. The new products what we come out will not come out with the same number of colors what we currently have as well. Some products might have 20 colors, some products might have 40 colors. Mm. But our SKU, there would be some SKUs which sh might retire also on a long term basis. Mm -hmm. But on an overall number, these SKUs will increase. Mm. Very hard to say what will be the exact number, mm. but our product additions will keep continuing. Going forward, you'll be increasing your stake in the company. Promoters do not have the 75% stake. Do you plan to take it up to that level sometime, say, in long, long period of time? Uh, as of now, there are no plans. There are no plans. And I just wanted to check, I was checking the shareholding pattern as well. There is an 8% pledge as well. Uh, what is that for and by when that will that become? See, uh, we are taking that for some personal reasons mm -hmm. and it is short term in nature. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping to close it soon. It was a pleasure speaking with you, Mr. Saragi. Thank you so much for joining us on Inside Out. Well, all right, that was a deep dive into Go Fashion. But time to slip into a short break. We'll come back with another interesting stock comparison between Sapphire Foods and Devyani International. You don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Inside Out. Well, the street has been debating about the big valuation gap between Sapphire and Divyani. In fact, investors quizzed the management of Sapphire Foods in their quarter one FY23 con call about this gap. The management responded saying that they are focused on business and also on their execution plans, which for them is most crucial. In fact, the management jokingly added that if buy orders come in, then the stock, well, maybe in fact, there'll be a bit of narrowing of that gap. But you must be wondering why we're comparing these two names. Well, the reason is Sapphire Foods India and Devyani International, they operate outlets of KFC and Pizza Hut restaurants. Now, both the companies are franchise operators of Yum! brands here in India. Which brings us to the point, then what's the difference between these two? Well, on the outlets front, Devyani operates more than 1,000, which is higher than Sapphire, which operates roughly around 620. Devyani is a more tightly held entity with the promoter holding at around 63%. They also have the faith of investors after they have created massive value for shareholders in Varun Beverages. Now on the flip side, Sapphire is a PE owned and the shareholding is a little bit more fragmented with lower promoter holding. Sapphire Foods has been plagued by the exposure to Sri Lanka as they had a fairly large exposure to Sri Lanka which has come down drastically actually. Remember Sri Lanka has been hit by political developments in the past few months. Devyani International, well, they opened their first Costa Coffee Outlook in 2005 and they operate 55 Costa Coffee outlets here in India. Now, Costa Coffee's global business was acquired by Coca-Cola in 2018 and so the street was worried about renewal of this particular contract as Devyani's sister concern, Varun Beverages, was a bottler for Pepsi. But Coca-Cola entered into a revised development agreement with Devyani for Costa business in August 2021. That indicates the faith in the group's execution prowess. Well, as of the past quarter, Sapphire's revenues were nearly around 80% of Devyani. The EBITDA is nearly around 65% of Devyani. Though the margins are lower by around 300 basis points. But for the core India operations, which is bulk of the profitability, well, the gap is just around 210 basis points. Well, before we wind down, Let's get the valuation chart 
up for you on the screen. So we need to see what happens next then. Will there be a narrowing of gap between these two? And if that happens, how does it happen? Sapphire moves to Divyani or Divyani reverses? Well, time will tell on that front. Well, we've completely run out of time on this edition of Inside Out. It's goodbye from Sonal and myself. But you do write to us and tell us about companies you want us to discuss and you want to hear about. We'll try to feature them on the show. Thanks so much for watching.